Hello and welcome back to the synopsis series on unleashing system Verilog and UVM. My name is Amish Oza. I am a senior instructor for verification methodologies at Synopsys Customer Education Services. In this episode, A Rich Inheritance, we will explore the basics of inheritance in system Verilog object-oriented programming. The key to productivity in any software paradigm is reuse. You have started using classes and OOP. How can you make changes quickly? The power of inheritance. But what is inheritance in OOP? We saw in earlier episodes that a class is an encapsulation of data and function just like a module. We also saw that an instance of a class is called an object. The new function constructs the memory of the object based on the class definition. We saw in the episode on randomization that you can define transaction and component classes to architect your test bench. The power of randomization comes from the randomize function which is built into each class. You can control randomization using constraints. One of the most common requirements of randomization is changing constraints to create new test scenarios. Use inheritance. This allows you to extend a class. Think of it as a virtual copy-paste. Everything in the original class is available in the extended class. You only add your new constraints. The original class is usually referred to as the base class or alternatively the super class. The extended class is also called the subclass. What if you want to add new properties and methods? You can do that in the extended class without affecting users of the base class. The goal is to replace an existing object with an object of the extended class. So you can simply point the original handle to the new object. This is called polymorphism. The ability of a base object handle to point to an extended object. This is what enables us to use OOP and make changes using inheritance without the changes having a cascading effect on the rest of the test bench. Different methodologies like UVM and VMM may have different techniques of achieving this, but they all use the principle of polymorphism under the hood. Now when the extended class object is randomized, it also uses the added constraints. The question that arises is, can you change existing base class methods? You may want to inject errors or delays, or coding a new algorithm may make the simulation faster. And yes, changing of existing base class methods is allowed in the extended class. This is also known as overriding. In this extended class, the function GenCRC has been modified. Notice that in an instance of the bad packet class, both the GenCRC methods are available. It is likely 
that you may want to reuse the existing GenCRC method. This is done by using the keyword super to access the method of the base class from the extended class if you wish to use the method. We saw that we are simply using polymorphism to point a base class object to an extended class object. But when we modify a method, will the modified method get called using a base handle? This is achieved by making the base class method virtual. Now when the method is called using a base handle that is pointing to an extended object, it uses the modified method in the extended class object. Only methods in the base class that you wish to allow to be modified should be marked as virtual. Once a method is marked as virtual in the base class, it is always virtual in the extended class. One of the goals of using classes is to improve team productivity. Inheritance in OOP allows you to use the full power of OOP. You can reuse an existing class simply adding to or modifying existing constraints and methods. An extended class can be extended further. Because of polymorphism, you do not need to change existing code to take advantage of modifications to constraints or virtual methods in the base class. Since transactions and configurations are encapsulated inside classes, you can define many test scenarios by extending these classes. All standardized methodologies like VMM and UVM make use of and work because of inheritance. Here's how you should pace your journey into the system Verilog world. First, get the fundamentals right. Then learn the most important aspects of constraints and inheritance. And then complete your journey with cover groups, assertions and UVM. To learn more about System Verilog and UVM in depth, Synopsys offers effective hands-on training. We have workshops for System Verilog test bench, assertions and UVM. In North America, our full-time instructors focus only on developing and delivering training workshops. They have a combined 60 years of industry experience in design, verification, training, EDA tools and IEEE standards committees. We will be glad to customize our offerings for your needs. For more information and to register, visit this website. This series includes many short videos on System Verilog and UVM fundamentals. Please give us your feedback and let us know what else you would like to learn about in verification languages and methodologies. This is Amish Oza. Thank you for watching.